Agyan, Timirandasya, Gena Jena Sala, Kaya Chak Suhun Militam Yena Tasmai, Sri Guru Vena Maha, Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Mutale, Swayam Rupa, Kadam Mayam Dadati Swapadantikam, Nama Om Vishnu Padai, Krishna Pustai Bhutale, Shimakti Bhakti Charu Swami Itinamine, Nama Om Vishnu Padai, Krishna Pustai Bhutale, Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine, Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pacharini Nirvishisa Sunyavari Pastyat Yare Sitarine, Panchakalpa, the Rubis Chakri Pasindu Bay, Pachapakitanam Bhavane Vyo, Vaishnava Vyo, the Mahoma Maha, Sri Krishna, Jaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gaur, Bhakta Vrindam Hare, Krishna Hare, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, um, September 17th, 75 years ago, um, uh, Bhakti Churu Swami Maharaj appeared on this planet in an area of West Bengal, nearby Calcutta. I'm not exactly certain of the actual town, but if anybody knows, they can make it known to everyone. Um, Bhakti Churu Swami Maharaj is, um, was very dear to Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada gave him a lot of special services and instructed him personally in the, the execution of devotional service. He served Srila Prabhupada in a number of different ways. But one way was that he used to cook for Prabhupada regularly, especially when Prabhupada was in Vrindavan. Maharaj would be there cooking for him. And Prabhupada really liked his cooking. Um, on the uh, ISKCON um, video series by by my godbrother, godbrother Siddhartha. Uh, he puts out a series of uh, DVDs interviewing different Prabhupada disciples on their experience with Srila Prabhupada. There are approximately 68 DVDs that have been published or made available since the inception. He interviews devotees personally and then places it in the form of a DVD. Um, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj is on two of those um, DVDs. Uh, you just have to check the series and see which two he is on. If you want to get a more of an insight of Bhakti Chiru Maharaj's relationship with Srila Prabhupada, and a little bit more about him as a great person, as a personality who did such great service. Um, you know, please take time and find these uh, DVDs. It's a beautiful series. You can purchase this, this three um, casing, which has a total of 68 DVDs. It's a wonderful experience hearing from Srila Prabhupada's disciples about their relationship and the many of the pastimes that they had with Srila Prabhupada. Um, so uh, something has uh, been revealed today around the world. It's making its revelation around the world for the first time ever. Many, many years ago, uh, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj uh, was with, uh, well, actually Maharaj used to visit quite often London, and he has a very large number of disciples and followers in London. 
Uh, personally, I spent a lot of time with Maharaj in London, in different venues. Um, we even did programs together. Um, but uh, one devotee, a very dear, dear disciple of His Holiness Radhana Swami Maharaj, who was also a great scholar in Shastra. His name is Ch Kartik Chandra Prabhu. He's a grihasta who lives in uh, London. And being inspired by Bhakti Churu Maharaj, he wrote what is called Bhakti Churu Astakam, eight verses in glorification of Srila Bhakti Churu Swami Maharaj. He showed them to Bhakti Churu Swami Maharaj, but Maharaj, out of his natural humility, uh, asked him not to make it public. But now, under the circumstances, it's good that the whole world will now hear these beautiful prayers. And today, what I'll do is I'll not just read them because they're actually um, expressed in a beautiful melody, melody that is the same melody that glorifies Lord Chaitanya in his Sachi Sutta Astakam prayers, eight prayers that glorify Lord Chaitanya. So using that melody, Kartik Chandra Prabhu uh, added that to the Astakam of Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. So uh, if you bear with me, uh, I'm going to be reading these prayers, or actually, if you can tolerate it, my singing, I'll be singing these prayers and also giving the translation. And then afterwards, as we go through all eight of them, I'll comment on some of the words that are mentioned in these prayers. So again, um, these prayers are each of them have a heading uh, in relationship to Bhakti Churu Maharaj. So the first prayer is called Jananam Chalanam, which means his birth and early activities. And so I'll sing the, the verse. Prabhu Gaura Britam Sura Vanga Sutam Charame Patitam Sharanam Rikitam Amritam Rasitam Prabhu Para Britam Pranamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Pranamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Pranamami Bhakti Translation. I pay my respectful obeisances unto the most eminent Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, servant of Lord Guranga, the son of auspicious land of Bengal, who studied in the West and then searched for a refuge, refuge, who tasted the nectar from the nectar of devotion and chose Srila Prabhupada's shelter. Prayer number two is called Guru Dasa Karam, service to the spiritual master. Prabhu Pada Ridam Tavritam Vijatam Bahushastra Garam Anuvada Kritam Guru Vani Dritam Nijatasya Kritam Pranamami Pranamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Pranamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Pranamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Translation I pay my respectful obeisances unto the most eminent Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj who quickly conquered the heart of Srila Prabhupada translated many of his teachings, practiced the words of his spiritual master, and personally 
served him. Verse number three, taking shelter, shelter of Srila Prabhupada. Rasa Raja Parayana Marga Charam Sudha Gaura Pito Hari Nama Gritam Kura Dakshi Naya Bali Vajcharitam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam I pay my respectful obeisances unto the most eminent Bhakti Churu Swami Maharaj, who followed the path of complete devotion to Lord Rasaraj, the fountainhead of transcendental metals, accepted the Hari Nam initiation on the auspicious day of Gaur Purnima, and as a fee to his spiritual master, he surrendered his very self, just like Bali Maharaj. Verse number four, practicing Srila Prabhupada's instructions. Triam avaranam riddhaye nihitam sachache nasvatas tavadar sayamam adipam srayamam tvajame chavapum pranamami bhakti charu swami manam Pranamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Pranamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Translation I pay my respectful obeisances unto the most eminent Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj who kept three jewel-like instructions of his spiritual master in his heart. One, Demonstrate your love for me through mutual loving relationships with each other. Two, follow the governing body. And three, do not leave my body because it is ISKCON. Text number five is called Bali Karma Param, offering a great tribute to Srila Prabhupada. Sata Janma Dine Chala Chitra Kritam Swaguru Mahima Jagata Vivitam Sukha Shastra Falam Swanu Vara Kritam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Translation, I pay my respectful obeisances unto the most eminent Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, who on his spiritual master's 100th anniversary day completed the series, television series called Abhay Charan and publicized his glories to the world and also completed a beautiful translation of Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures the scripture spoken by Srila Sukadev Goswami. Text number six is called Dati Krishna Mayam, being absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Nirpabharit hare nagure vasitam janamandana mohana vasakritam satatam nitaram harikarya ratam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam I pay my respectful obeisances unto the most eminent Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj who took residence in Ujjain, the city of the great king Brihat Hari and built a temple abode of Sri Sri Madan Mohan, being perpetually and wholly devoted to the cause of Lord, Lord Hari, that is, to bring souls to the material world back to him. All glories unto you. Verse number seven. Sakalam Madhuram, full of sweetness. 
Prabhuparasutam Marubhavayutam Madura Kriya Maru Maravadam Tavacharu Charam Rita Sita Karam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Translation, I pay my respectful obeisances unto the most eminent Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, a son of Srila Prabhupada, who was endowed with a sweet nature and gives the sweet Lord Madhava through his sweet activities. Your pleasant disposition cools my scorching heart. And Sutta Sara, this verse that we just read is formed by collating the headings of the previous seven verses. So it is the essence of everything spoken in text one through seven. So this is verse number eight that's referring to. It's called Sutta Sara, Essence of Glorification. Jananam Chalanam Guru Dasya Karam Sharanam Charanam Bali Karma Karam Gati Krishna Mayam Sakalam Maduram Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam Panamami Bhakti Charu Swami Varam I pay my respectful obeisances unto the most eminent Bhakti Charu Swami, whose birth and early activities, service to his spiritual master, taking shelter of Srila Prabhupada, practicing of Srila Prabhupada's instructions, offering a great tribute to Srila Prabhupada, and always being absorbed in Krishna consciousness are full of sweetness. The last is called Yachana, prayerful request. Kripa no smita tap a pa a crota swadayam. Kripa prabhu dehi tu dasya varam. Tava dasya varo baba voga haram. Pranamami mahur tava para rajam. Pranamami mahur tava para rajam. Pranamami mahur tava para rajam. Translation, although I am wretched, you have shown me your mercy. Please, O oh Master, grant me the boon of your servitor. That boon will destroy the disease of material existence. I repeatedly pay my respectful obeisances at the dust of your noble's feet. So these are eight plus one. Beautiful, beautiful verses sung to the tune of Sachi Sutta Mastakam, composed by a beautiful devotee, also a personal friend of mine from London, uh, His Grace uh, Kartik Chandra Prabhu. So um, he also informed me that on this day, uh, these verses will reach uh, worldwide uh, publication. Before then, Bhakti Chiru, out of his natural humility, didn't want his glories to be sung publicly. So following that instructions, uh, Arctic Chandra Prabhu uh, didn't make these verses in this beautiful, beautiful glorification, which is called Srila Bhakti Chiru Swami Astakam. So, uh, uh, I can't think of a more wonderful way that he has been glorified than by composing this really heartfelt and very, what we say, deep expression of love to Bhakti Charu Maharaj, which indicates Bhakti Charu Maharaj's amazing qualities in his execution of devotional service and especially his love for each and every devotee. 
And that's what most of all of us who had his association remember about him. How loving, how personal, how caring, how much he loved to serve his God brothers. It was just uh, something that was so sweet to see and yet at the same time so amazing because he, it was genuine. It wasn't done as a service, it was done from the heart. And that was, that's really made it so, so personal. So those of us who had personal association with Maharaj, and I'm sure some of you who are listening today also had that, uh, had the opportunity to, to witness his beautiful expression of loving care and concern and service to uh, everyone. That was his nature. So on this particular day, we, of course, feel happy to have the opportunity to remember him and to glorify him. But it's also a day of great uh, feelings of uh, loss, knowing that in order to get his association again, we will have to achieve the perfection of life, pure love of God, and go back home, back to Godhead. But that is available for all of us. And as one devotee, who was also a great devotee in our movement, who was also had departed many years ago, said, uh, I want to be there. I want to be one of the first to leave Prabhupada's disciples so I can greet all of you as you come back to the spiritual world to be in the bigger ISKCON. As Prabhupada said, there will be an ISKCON in the spiritual world. <laughs> so I'll uh, stop speaking now. Of course, we welcome any comments from the devotees. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to Srila Bhakti Charlie Swami. Thank you very much for sharing those beautiful prayers. I was wondering if you could share a personal story with Maharaj that, that you, um, maybe a nice experience or memory with him. I have many. <laughs> and when I'm asked this question, which I have been a few times, I struggle with thinking about which one that is the one to speak about. Um, I guess the one that uh, really impacted me the most um, was uh, <clears throat> when uh, I had taken on the service of becoming Srila Prabhupada's Pujari at, at the palace in New Vrindavan. And that service started in 1979. Actually, it started in, in the beginning of 19, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it started at the end of 1980, around the month of September, 1980. I got the opportunity to uh, be the Pujari in Prabhupada's palace in New Vrindavan. And while I was there, <clears throat> Bhakti Chu Maharaj had arrived. It was one of his 
few, I think one of the more first of all his visits to New Vrindavan. And uh, I had never really met this great personality, being situated in New Vrindavan most of my time and not traveling so much, other than going around and doing some sankirtan. So Maharaj came, and uh, one of Prabhupada's uh, disciples, who was a personal cook for Prabhupada when Prabhupada was personally here, was doing the cooking at the palace <coughs> for Srila Prabhupada. So Bhakti Charu Maharaj wanted to cook for Prabhupada that day. So um, this devotee, his name was Nanda Kumara. He happily allowed Bhakti Charu Maharaj to cook. And of course, I was there as the pujari to take the plate and put it on the altar. And so, uh, and he cooked with much care and with much time, made a grand feast, which was just the Raj Boga offering. But he made a beautiful feast for Srila Prabhupada, remembering what Srila Prabhupada liked and uh, doing, using whatever vegetables we had. We had a pretty good supply, of course. And he made a beautiful, beautiful uh, lunch for Srila Prabhupada. And it was my service now to take it and put it on the altar and offer it to Srila Prabhupada. And so I took the plate, and it was quite full, <laughs> put it on the altar, I did the formal offering. And just at the end of the offering, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj walks on the altar. And as he walks onto the altar, he happens to notice something that's on the altar that I had seen every day in my, just by, you know, doing my service. It was a little tom-tom drum, little bungalow type drum. You can hold it in your hand with a, you know, with the uh, kind of like, what is it called? Surface, it's more like made out of, what is it? Vinyl, vinyl surface. And that drum was the drum that Prabhupada used to start the Hare Krishna movement back in 1965, 66 in New York. When Prabhupada would go to the park in Thompson Square Park and uh, with a few of his fledging followers who would bang on, bang on the drum and sing Hare Krishna. And uh, there was no Murdung in those days. So that's all we had was that little, that's all Prabhupada had was that little bongo jam. Pradanga came later, not too much later, but at that time, all there was was that bongo drum. So Prabhupada was, was beating on the drum and singing Hare Krishna, really nice. You can actually hear some of the old recordings with Prabhupada using that drum. And uh, so when Bhakti Charu Maharaj saw the drum, he got quite emotional. And, uh, you know, his, you could see by his face, he, and he was so emotional. He walked over, picked up the drum, uh, put the drum to his chest, embraced the drum. And he said, this drum was the drum that started the Hare Krishna movement back in New York. And just to see the exp his expression of devotion to the drum, <laughs> You know, I had been looking at that drum every day, and this, for me, it was just a part of my the paraphernalia on the altar. But after that, I really, my, my whole feelings and my whole attitude towards the drum changed. And uh, I saw it as a worshipable object. And I think we started putting garlands around it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Bhakti Charu Maharaj kind of revealed to us that the glories of that wonderful drum, it's still there in New Vrindavan. Um, it's a very special part of the memorabilia of Srila Prabhupada. And then Maharaj came off the altar. Of course, when he went on the altar, he took his socks off to go onto the altar. 
And later on, I took lunch with Maharaj. And um, also, um, there was another devotee there, another senior devotee, that was Hamsa Duda. He had also come. So the three of us took lunch together. And I think maybe there might have been uh, uh, someone else. But then after experience this wonderful lunch cooked by Bhakti, Chir Bhakti Chiru Maharaj, um, Maharaj departed. But when he departed, he forgot his socks. <laughs> so I was thinking, hmm, should I return his socks to him? No, that's not a good idea. <laughs> so I decided to uh, take advantage of these uh, precious paraphernalia and I picked up the socks and uh, I kept them. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I don't know, it must have been because of time, that was, you know, like 30 years ago, somehow the socks disappeared from my possession. It might have been stolen by somebody else, for, or it might have, I might have gave it away to someone, I can't remember exactly. But having those socks and remembering Maharaj was for me a very special uh, experience and uh, so that was one of the more sweeter moments we shared together many times we were together in Ujjain we did kirtan together we danced together took prasadam together Maharaj was a great fan of pizza and he actually had some of his best cooks train up to become the best pizza makers. So when you would go to Ujjain, you would always get the best quality pizza. And Maharaj became famous because he created a particular type of pizza that was never done before. It was called bottomless pizza bottomless pizza. I don't know if anybody ever had it. I had the good fortune to have it three years ago when Maharaj, when my last, not my last, but one of my most uh, memorable times with him is when he came to uh, Chicago for Balaram's Appearance Day Festival. And we were together and we took Prashadam together at the, at the house of his disciple who was the temple president. Sunil Madhava Prabhu, he had cooked this bottomless pizza and you have to taste it <laughs> to understand the glories of it. Uh, he might have instructed it to his, some of his disciples who are still practicing it. I'm sure he did. But of course, when he cooked it, it was unique. Um, so this is uh, some of the I mean, there was many times we spent uh, we spent time together in Chicago when the 9/11 uh, was there. When that uh, supposedly, of course, we're not sure exactly what happened, but when those planes hit those twin towers, the towers were destroyed. Of course, there's some controversy over whether that's the actual truth of the matter. But anyway, during that incident, Maharaj was there with me in Chicago. We both were there together. So we had been discussing and seeing what was happening when the whole United States became completely paranoid. And there was a, not a lockdown, but it was practically a stoppage in all flights all over America with only a few airlines still flying. So, uh, yeah, so I was, there were many, many wonderful moments that we shared together like that. Malarad gave me many inst important instructions in my Krishna conscious practice, which I, f I feel even today is, has helped me in understanding 
how to execute devotional service. But as we mentioned, and it's worth mentioning again, is that his loving relationships with everyone uh, just touched everyone's heart. Um, and that's what we missed the most out of everything that Bhakti Tru Maharaj did or actually stood for in his sojourn uh, with us on this, you know, in Krishna consciousness. We remember his loving mood towards each and every person and especially towards his God brothers. He would personally embrace each and every God brother when he would see them. That was his regular thing. He would always, you would meet him and you would get an embrace immediately. This was Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. And it was always so sweet and so lovely. So yeah, um, yeah, it's a great loss that Maharaj, of course, Krishna has his plans and whatever Krishna does is always perfect. Obviously, he had some greater service for Maharaj. And uh, so we can still remember Maharaj, remember what he taught us, remember the times that he was with us. And... Uh, And those, of you, those devotees who had that association, um, they can never forget what it was like in that association. His impression upon you was so strong that each time you were together, it became a memorable experience. And I should also note, maybe not too many people are aware of this, but it was Bhakti Chiru Maharaj's fighting spirit that saved the New York temple just a couple of years ago when there was a big contention about selling it or not selling it. And the lines were divided, devotees on each side of the line was Bhakti Tru Maharaj who came in there and represented the GBC in a very direct and very, uh, what we say, spirit of Srila Prabhupada's mood. And that's recorded. You can hear his lecture. And although while he was speaking, people were shouting at him who were against what he was saying, he remained very strong, steady, undisturbed, and completely fixed on Srila Prabhupada's instructions. It's an amazing experience. So although he was so gentle, loving, caring, and powerful, still he had that fighting spirit to fight for Krishna consciousness. And the proof is the, the success of the New York temple. Okay, so these are some things that I remember. Uh, I would like to hear from some other devotees who are listening, maybe some of their experiences or just some words about Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru. Over Don Leela, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to your holiness. I never had the opportunity to meet um, Bhakti Charu Maharaj. Um, you must have. You must have seen him in, 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 uh, in Chicago. In fact, you did, because I have pictures of Bhakti Chiru Maharaj in Chicago in 2017. And in the pictures, you are also there. I can, okay. For some reason, I don't remember what he, I don't remember. But um, I, I really appreciated your story and um, the beautiful uh, glorification of him. And also, you know, yeah, my memory's going. 
And also the fact that um, he said to his, I guess it's his disciple, that if you love me, you will love other people. And I think that that is, was very beautiful. In other words, if you're going to show me respect, you have to love others. And I thought, I thought that was very beautiful in his prayer. So um, that's, that's all. I just wanted to mention that. And I've heard many, many things about him that, um, like you said, just a very, very wonderful person, very, um, what was the word, very humble, extremely humble and, um, and loving. So mm -hmm. thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for sharing that. I'll also go through the pictures and send you the picture that I was referring to. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> I apologize. I'm my memory is bad sometimes. I yes, Hare, <laughs> Hare Krishna. No, that's okay. I uh, we all suffer from you know memory lapses. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Thank you. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anyone else? <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. This is Hari Prasad Das, my most humble. Arivo, Arivo. At your Arivo. lotus feet. Arivo. All glories to you. Jai Shri Prabhupada. Jai Shri Bhakti Charu Maharaj. Hey, I, my day is even getting much better. To see you. <laughs> you are the most merciful, compassionate person I know. I can't get over it. Thank you. <laughs> um, please, if if um, you weren't planning to, please share those prayers and glorification with Bhakti Charu Maharaj. Uh, I think that would be really beneficial for us. And uh, I can share one little experience, if you would like, with, that I had with him. Please. So uh, when I was very new in Krishna consciousness. I think probably in 2007, I'd been practicing roughly for a year or so. Um, I had been inspired by certain fully committed swamis and, and great Vaishnavas, um, but only a, a few people that really um, pushed me to, to want to give more in Krishna consciousness. I wasn't getting the same effect um, from just coming to the temple regularly. So I was struggling with that. And I was asking uh, one of my mentors at the time, who was a brahmachari in New York, what, you know, who can I hear from to get more inspiration? Who can I meet who is really very self-realized and will kind of give me that juice of, of what it can be like to, um, to be fully immersed in bhakti. And he gave the name of Bhakti Charu Maharaj. So I noted that and, uh, and I got the opportunity to meet him in Washington, D.C. Um, in the summer of 2007, I believe, at a, uh, a home program outside where Radhanath Maharaj was the speaker and Bhakti Charu Maharaj was a special guest who was invited by Radhanath Maharaj to speak a few words afterwards. And Bhakti Charu Maharaj decided to use his time purely to glorify Radhanath Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> so he spoke for maybe 10 minutes and the entire time he was just convincing everybody how blessed we are to know Radhanath Maharaj. And in very sort of controversial terms that this person cannot be from this planet. If you look at his life at, from the, the very beginning, it, it makes no sense that he's from the material world. So I, I, I was touched, I was inspired, and, uh, and I also appreciated his courage in, in speaking that. And I felt something from his presence that lined up with what I was looking for that I was not experiencing and which I needed at that time. So I had gone with my mentor after he spoke to introduce myself and I offered my obeisances to him. And then he, um, he lifted me up and he embraced me and he put his <laughs> hand around me. 
and he gave me his blessings in, in such a beautiful way. But I was shocked because I was a total stranger and he was embracing me as if I was his son, like his long lost son. And it was such a spiritual experience. I was so emotional. And for many years, I've kept that sort of hidden in my heart. And it was only after his passing that I understood the significance of that moment. I never had such a personal interaction with him afterwards. I'd, I had little exchanges here and there as a brahmachari in New York City and um, hosting him at the Bhakti Center. So I'd seen him on many occasions um, and I'd heard his talks and I always deeply appreciated him, but I never had such a powerful exchange as that one. And it was only after he passed that it came like rushing to the surface. And as I said, I understood the significance of that. And what a, uh, a moment, the spiritual world sort of colliding with my material experience. I'm forever grateful. Wow, amazing story. Truly amazing. Yeah. yeah. That was Maharaj. If he saw something in someone, he would he would express that in a loving way. Yes. Obviously, obviously he saw something, and he wanted to make you aware of how. Of course, he would. He, you know, I don't want to analyze it because it's not it's not for analyzing, but still at the same time, Krishna's in the heart. And that that was all that was needed for that next step. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He knew how much I needed that gesture of the guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. I want to say one other thing, but I won't say it in public. I'll tell you privately. <laughs> I, I can't wait to hear. Dying. I don't, I don't want to uh, make you feel embarrassed, so I'll tell you in private. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna, Krishna. Thank you, Harry Prashad Guru. That was so sweet. Thank you. You are the best, Maharaj. Thank you, thank you. I am the least. <laughs> if you add you you add a, an e to the word you add an a to the word best you get beast. <laughs> <laughs> That's very creative. <laughs> it also has a lot of truth. <laughs> I don't add that a to you. <laughs> I can send it to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Made his corona go so I can come and see him. <laughs> From your lips to Krishna's ears. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Madan Gopal, you want to say something? Please accept my obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj, all glories to His Holiness Bhakti True Swami. Um, yeah, that was amazing with Hari Prasad Prabhu's um, story with Maharaj and I feel really, uh, I was just laughing and crying just now because uh, I feel so inspired by the interaction between both of you and of course Bhakti Chu Swami, what he did to all of us, whoever he um, encountered. So I don't know if I can share, I'm getting kind of emotional. It's, uh, Maharaj gave me a few hugs and you know, I got to try his prasadam a few times that he cooked and he just really blessed me in these few encounters like like no other so i can relate to Hari prasad prabhu Hare krishna thank you madan 
All glories to your service. Hi, Krishna Gumash. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please ask me humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness, and all glories to your holiness, Bhakti Tata Swami Maharaj. Maharaj, I am very much for you. Thank you very much for the glorification, Maharaj. And you know, um, I just wanted to uh, tell, uh, you know, um, in 2013, first time when I came into contact of Krishna consciousness was looking at the picture of uh, His Holiness Bhakti Tata Swami Maharaj. He was like one of my colleague who was aspiring at the time Maharaj. He had the picture of Maharaj in the office. So I just started asking questions, who is this personality? And that's where the discussion started about ISKCON. And he was just explaining me about Maharaj and the ISKCON movement, Prabhupada. And that's how I got interaction with the ISKCON and you know, Krishna Consciousness Maharaj. And I don't uh, forget about the interaction, personal interaction we had luckily. Maharaj visited Richmond when we were there in 2014, once and also 16. Both the times we had an opportunity of you know um, having the program at the ISKCON of Richmond. And we had uh, you know personal uh, inter interaction also. And we got a signed copy of his book of the time, Ocean of Mercy. And the, the main mercy we got with Maharaj was uh, when we went to 2018, we went to D-Land in Florida. When he was there, he just started the center there. And, you know, uh, all the devotees from New Goloka and also from Charlotte, we were going to meet Maharaj. There was three days we, there, we were there. And, and, and with the care and the attention, he did not make us to stay in any hotel or anything just because the D-Land is a new community, even though it's a new community. He made sure that whoever came from outside has to stay in the whatever the quarters we had there. And personally, he, you know, um, taking care of all the three days, even at the time of Prashadam, coming into the Prashadam room and inquiring everybody. I, I can't even, you know, express my gratitude and the understanding and, you know, the, the humbleness of Maharaj, you know, talking to each of us and gave us a personal time of making sitting in his room and asking questions with the kids also and giving the uh, prashadam, the special prashadam, the cookies from his, you know, and, and, and Maharaj, you know, I mean, I cannot uh, express more uh, the association and we were really um, blessed to have the personal association of Maharaj and, and, and deeply, deeply, you know, uh, uh, we miss him, uh, but, you know, we cherish the moments we, we, we spent and got an opportunity to spend the time with him, Maharaj. So thank you very much. Just wanted to share uh, these interactions with uh, His Holiness Bhakti Jairam Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, that was wonderful. Thank you, Srinivas. You brought out so much of Maharaj's loving qualities. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If there's anyone else, we'd be happy to. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, yeah. please take my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness, and all glories to His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj, Ki Jai. Well, I had the privilege. must have had some of Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, Please. I'm just, uh, as I'm hearing everyone speaking, it just reminds me of how loving, how personal, how caring, and how sweet uh, His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj was towards everyone. <clears throat> My first uh, meeting with His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj was when Maharaj came to New Orleans. He has a lot of disciples here also, and Maharaj had come and he was giving lectures. He later on gave a public program. But the very first lecture in the New Orleans temple was so remarkable because Guru Maharaj said, Krishna loves you. Krishna loves us so much. And then he went on to describe Krishna's love for us. He has, even though we have chosen to leave him and come to this material world, he's given us trees, he's given us rivers, he's given us this. I mean, just going on to show how much Krishna loves us, even though we have rebelled against Krishna. And the way Maharaj spoke, it was so loving. We felt as though Krishna himself is sending his love for us through Bhakti Charu Maharaj. 
I remember that very clearly how loving Maharaj was. And then later on, he gave a public program and always uh, Maharaj was so calm, so unflappable, no matter how demanding the schedule was, how many programs were arranged, how many places he had to visit. His demeanor was always very calm and very um, sweet and completely like unflappable in the, in the midst of so much mayhem and devotees saying, oh no, here Maharaj has to go to this person's house. No, not this program like that. And he was very, very calm throughout the whole thing. That was remarkable for me. And then the last time I saw Maharaj was here in Houston Temple last year, he came to give this seminar, the priceless gift of Srila Prabhupada. And that was another very remarkable seminar where Srila Prabhupada's um, gift to us, you know, going back to the spiritual world was extolled by Maharaj. And I remember at the end, I, I spoke to Maharaj briefly. That was my last conversation. I said, Maharaj, I really want to be a preacher for this great movement of Srila Prabhupada. And Maharaj just looked, he nodded his head calmly a few times. And I said, but is this okay? I'm in a woman's body. And he said, oh, he just shook his head. And he said, at that level, it doesn't matter. So then I asked, so then do I have your blessings? And he said, yes, you have my blessings. And those were the last words I ever spoke with him. <laughs> that was nice. And that's pretty powerful. <laughs> really powerful. You've given your blessings to preach. Whoa. That means you're guaranteed to success. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, go ahead, Prabhu. Oh. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Such a Narayan, yeah. Hare Krishna, all benefits, all grace to Srila Prabhupada. And uh, all grace to you, Your Holiness. Um, I met uh, Bhakti Charu Maharaj several times for different things. Uh, so I like to share uh, one. Uh, once uh, I, I may talk about it just in glorification to his call, one of the quality. Um, uh, when I was in serving South London Temple, I wanted to invite Maharaj to South London Temple and give a class. So I, I approached Maharaj and Maharaj said, I'm in a very tight situation because I only got a few more days in the UK. But when I come next time, I will approach you and uh, you can uh, arrange for me to come over there and uh, he would be happy to give a class. So when uh, Maharaj came next time and he landed at the Heathrow airport and uh, he rang from Heathrow airport without going to some, someone's house and uh, to let me know that he's in a country now so I can uh, make an arrangement Mm -hmm. Or what is my plan? I let him know. <laughs> and uh, he remember. He remembered everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always remembers everything. And it's not a, he landed and he went to some <laughs> to the place he wanted to go and then rang. No, from the airport he. Rang. <laughs> and I asked him. I said, Maharaj, where are you at the moment? And Maharaj said, I'm airport. I just landed. <laughs> and I was shocked. And uh, apart from that, um, uh, uh, I had to meet him for uh, our mentees, uh, regarding our mentees initiation. And uh, he, 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 I was really, myself and Madhavi, we were in, inspired by, by him um, to, to take the care of devotees. Mm. So to take a devotee care. And um, the, uh, he was so happy to seeing the way, uh, I mean, we followed his guidance and we were taking take care of devotees. Yeah, that was, his, that was his focus. 
Yeah. How to take care of devotees. Is, that's the most important service, is to serve the devotees who are serving Srila Prabhupada and who are serving ISKCON. That is our most important service and most needed service. <laughs> Thank you, Satya Narayan. I just, I just like to say to all the devotees out there, Satya Narayan Prabhu is a wonderful devotee. He's been dedicated to Krishna consciousness for many years. He has a daughter and a son who are both devotees. They're wonderful devotees fixed in Krishna consciousness and doing nice service. And uh, Satya Narayan Prabhu is about to undergo some uh, operation. So we would like to uh, ask all the assembled devotees to please give him your blessings and prayers that by Krishna's mercy, everything will turn out wonderful. And Satya Narayan will be back with us dancing and preaching. <laughs> So everyone, please offer your blessings to Satya Narayan Prabhu for a successful operation. Always seeking your guidance and mercy, Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Lalita Tangi. Hare Krishna. Um, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, Please accept my humble obeisances. Your uh, nectarian class every day is uh, more nectarian today uh, because of uh, glorifying your dear God brother. And it is so nice to see uh, the love from your heart uh, flowing. And we uh, wanted to invite the same mood of cooperation and love among ourselves. Um, Maharaj, um, Bhakti Charu Maharaj came to Charlotte uh, quite a, I think two, three times and we had the opportunity to uh, serve him and uh, uh, whenever he comes and if he stays for one or two days, uh, he insists that one of the days he cooks uh, for the other uh, people. So it, it was so, I mean, it's so natural. Maharaj uh, was an embodiment of uh, a mood of service. So he said that I also want to cook for all of you. That was so moving. And um, one uh, contribution of Maharaj that which I saw that that uh, that changed the face of uh, preaching in the region of South Tamil Nadu, uh, South India, was his Abhay Charan serial. So this serial came on. Saturdays in the morning, I think 11 to uh, 11.45, it had a very moving title song and a very uh, touching storyline of uh, Srila Prabhupada. And I remember I was uh, used to wait and watch that. So till before that, we had only one or two centers um, in the whole of Tamil Nadu, maybe in one or two metros and nothing in the south. But after this, uh, it was in those times when there was only Doordarshan and not much cable TV was there. And so people, uh, the whole of India was watching that. And after mm. that, after 96, um, I, I remember, you know, we received so many letters from the South asking for uh, more information about Srila Prabhupada and about the books of Srila Prabhupada in Tamil. And they used to mention that they saw about uh, this personality in the TV. And then uh, the preaching just uh, boomed up um, uh, with so many temples, starting from 98 till 2005. Uh, small preaching centers started and big temples started. And all this um, effect of um, um, by Maharaj service. And Maharaj, I don't know, personally, he has visited much there. But uh, he has been the cause of, uh, you know, changing the face of preaching of uh, uh, a, a place where it needed much and 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 i would um, would not think of any other idea to reach that remotest part of uh, villages and towns and cities and uh, uh, through this uh, tv serial so that was a very uh, moving contribution and if I, I can if i can say only in that part of india it had this effect then we can imagine the whole of india how many people 
uh, were benefited and and the glorification uh, pure glorification of a pure devotee uh, caused the boom of the preaching uh, movement and krishna was pleased and so many people took it up so um, we are very very uh, grateful to maharaj uh, cannot be thankful enough for such yeah. a contribution Thank you. Thank you. That was so wonderful to hear. It's something that I personally wasn't aware of, but thank you. That was such a nice thing. And this is another of the main features of Bhakti Thiru Maharaj's life, is that he constantly was glorifying Srila Prabhupada. And uh, this series that he made, which was commenting on four of this uh, video series, was a real tribute to the, to the life of Srila Prabhupada and to the glorification of what Prabhupada had done to spread Krishna consciousness. And as you so nicely indicated, what well, the effect it had in that area of the South. Um, I remember looking forward to watching every particular episode as it was coming out. <laughs> yeah. You can't get enough of Srila Prabhupada. It's like you just want more and more and more Bhakti Chiru Maharaj was uh, one thing that, I, that is inspired me by your talk is that uh, uh, when Bhakti Chiru Maharaj, when it was time for his uh, Vyasa Puja program, I had attended a few of them also, um, in order to satisfy the devotees who had come there to glorify him, and they really wanted to glorify their spiritual master, he accepted that glorification. But he, when he spoke, he only spoke about Prabhupada. <laughs> That's all he did. <laughs> he would just speak about Srila Prabhupada. And after some time, I noticed that he changed the whole program into a Prabhupada program. <laughs> he wanted the devotees to glorify Prabhupada. <laughs> and that became the feature of his Vyasa Puja offerings, every uh, programs every year. It's just a a glorification of Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> it was amazing. His love for Prabhupada was uh, indescribable. It's just so it's amazing. Thank you, Lalita Tangi. That was thank you, thank you so much, Maharaj, for your nectarian association every day and you know letting us uh, hear. Uh, your realizations. I, Thank you so I'm much. As, I'm, I'm as nectarian as bitter melon is. <laughs> <laughs> no, Maharaj, I, uh, we, uh, we can't stand up and talk. What is bitter? What's the, what is the sense? What is the Hindi name for bitter melon again? Uh, bitter melon? Is it Karela? Karela. Yeah, Karela, yes. I am like a Karela plan. <laughs> but Karela was a favorite uh, favorite of Srila Prabhupada. So you are <laughs> really the favorite of Srila Prabhupada. Well said, well said. Hari Bol. I have been defeated. By your mercy, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lalita Tangi. And I just wanted to add to all the devotees who are online if you haven't read it and even if you have read it please read maharaj's book ocean of mercy it describes his life coming to krishna consciousness and then uh, after a few chapters about his life he simply glorifies uh, Srila Prabhupada in the movement when he was about to write the book he only wanted to write about Prabhupada and the movement, but the publishers said, the Bodhi publishers said, you know, you got to add your life to it. Then it'll have a lot more attraction. <laughs> and so Maharaj, thinking that, all right, this will make the book more attractive. He included the first two chapters about himself, but the rest of the book is about Srila Prabhupada. But but the book is amazing because it show, it's the interaction with Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada as he uh, served Prabhupada in the many years he did. 
in Krishna consciousness. It's a beautiful book. Maybe somebody could post the link online how you can get that book because it's, I know it's still available. Uh, right after Maharaj departed, I again read the book for the second time and I felt like I had just read it for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vishalni, yeah. please say something. Yeah. Um, all glories to you, Shila Prabhupada and Patitaru Maharaj. Um, we went to his Vyas Puja last year with his um, disciples, and it was an amazing um, Vyas Puja. Like you say, he turned it on to Shila Prabhupada's glorification, and he actually looked after us so well, especially with my help. He made special care, special things to, for me. And, and he had so much on his plate himself, but he was so caring, very, very caring. I first met him in 1987-88, and um, that's when the connection was. And I used to hear his um, lectures online every now and then. And if I'm doing any lectures, I always used to refer to his lectures as well. But Srila Prabhupada, I mean, Bhakti Charu Maharaj only glorified Srila Prabhupada. And at one of his disciples' um, funeral, he spoke and he spoke so many lovely words that, that you know, he was not on this plat uh, in this material world. It felt like he was in the spiritual world, speaking from spiritual world. Yeah. Amazing. amazing. Thank you, Bishani. You're greatly fortunate to have that very close association with Maharaj. Yes. That's something that is very precious. Yes, Maharaj. Um, he was very caring. And if he met you once, like my sister, met him a few years ago, I mean, a couple of years before. And last year, he said, I know you, we met before, haven't we? I mean, he had a tremendous memory. Amazing. Amazing, it was amazing. amazing. Yeah, he remembers you, huh? After all yeah, these years. Yeah, he remembers, yeah. He had yeah. an amazing memory. Thank you, Vishani. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, you are the best. <laughs> Not really, but, <laughs> but thank you for your kind words. I'm trying, I'm trying to get better though. <laughs> and Peter Mellon is supposed to be very good. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your sweet glorification of Maharaj. <laughs> Anyone else would like to speak something? I have a little more time. I have to give a class in a, about, I have to leave in a half hour to give a class at the temple about Bhakti Churu Swami. So. We still have about a half hour if there's anyone else would like to say anything. Hare Krishna Maharaj. It's Satyanayan again. <laughs> <laughs> Except my humble obeisance is all going to uh, uh, Sira Bhakti Jaru Swami and uh, Sira Prabhupada. Uh, once I met Maharaj in uh, Mayapur with my family. And uh, he said, um, you must visit uh, Ujjain. So I straight away said to Maharaj, I said, yes, I'd like to go Ujjain. Not next time, this time. <laughs> and he was so happy. So he said, oh, let me know when you, when you are coming there, when you are going there, and I will make an uh, arrangement for you, like accommodation and prasad, etc." So I let him know. And uh, we went to Ujjain. And uh, he emailed us that probably he won't be there because he had to leave for 
to go somewhere else. America. Uh, I think uh, USA, yeah. Yes. So, okay. when, so when we went, and he was just about to leave, and he was just about to sit in a car to go to airport. And uh, he saw me and my family, and uh, he just stopped. And he said, is everything fine? Uh, are you settled down? And I said, yes. So he was so happy. He said, he said, now I'm happy. And then he got into the car to go there. <laughs> so okay. I'm, so he, I'm talking about uh, how he was carrying, you know, devotees. Yeah, and another indication of his caring is that for those of you who are in India, um, of course, it's difficult to travel anywhere now. But when the opportunity comes, go to visit that temple in Ujjain. It's the most amazing temple. It's so beautiful. Um, I was there for the opening in, I think it was 2000. Um, I'm not sure what year it was. 2006, maybe? Something like that. But I was there for the opening. But now Maharaj has added... About, the, about five years ago, he uh, had another building built and he turned it into a, uh, uh, a full-fledged Ayurveda, uh, Ayurvedic hospital. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you can go there and get, I mean, quality, quality treatment. Um, I was there twice, two different occasions, two successive years not long ago. The doctors exhibit the mood of Bhakti Charu Maharaj, especially the head doctor. He is so sweet and caring. And Maharaj brought him in from Kerala. And uh, he actually became a disciple after doing the work of, uh, you know, organizing and developing the hospital. It's a beautiful hospital. It's pretty big. The... Uh, the persons who do the work in the hospital, the uh, assistants are highly trained in Ayurvedic science and various types of treatments. Um, along with, there is some devotees who also connect with the hospital who manage it and also assist the hospital. So um, it's one of the better hospitals in in the uh, ISKCON, um, of course, uh, you might say it's even within the world of Ayurvedic hospitals, it is becoming, of course, it's new because it's only been about five years, but it's becoming more and more noted in the secular world as being a qualified Ayurvedic center like that. And... Um, I have many good memories of being there. The rooms are really nice. <laughs> the prashadam is super excellent. Maharaj employed the best of all cooks, one uh, Mataji there, and she's a devotee and she cooks so celestial, just according to what is needed for your treatment. So everything is first class. Everything is highly first class, and the care is uh, is also so very nicely organized. So, any of you who ever have the desire to, uh, you know, take Ayurvedic treatment, please consider the place in Ujjain. And of course, the temple is just three doors down from the uh, Ayurvedic clinic, so you're right there by the temple. And you can visit the temple, visit the restaurant, and uh, just meet the devotees who are disciples of Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. Wonderful, wonderful devotees. Okay, so I think we'll break now. And uh, we'll say thank you all for coming today as a way to glorify Bhakti Charu Maharaj. Um, I'm sure Srila Prabhupada is pleased
to hear anyone who speaks in glorification of Bhakti Charu Maharaj, because he was very, very special, very dear to Srila Prabhupada. Um, so on this day, I offer my respects to all the devotees and uh, especially to His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj, the very dear disciple and very powerful preacher of Krishna consciousness. All glories to Srila Bhakti Charu Maharaj, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very Thank much, you very Maharaj. Much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. See you all. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Shamarani Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Archana City. Thank you, Manasi Ganga. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.